Dubbo is full of wealthy holidaymakers brushing up against some measure of poverty. Everywhere you look, condominiums and resorts are under construction, as too are such facilities as golf courses. Fishing is the real magnet, and every morning countless game boats leave port on a daily pilgrimage to the fishing grounds. Under local cliffs, pirates once buried their treasure, and on the cliffs above town, the wealthy permanent population lives in a village of air-conditioned luxury. The first thing that strikes you is the heat. A cool early morning breeze soon gives way to a real scorcher. The time to leave port and head to the fishing ground is just before daylight. We needed no encouragement. Randy is the skipper of Salsa and along with two Mexican deckhands runs a heck of a ship. We're heading offshore. We're going to end up probably 25, 30 miles from where we left. We're going to go down to an area called the Gordo Banks. The what it's banks? Gordo Banks. Yeah. It's a pretty popular area around here. It's just an offshore seamount. And uh, the water conditions there were nice three days ago, two days ago when I was there. And, and on the way we're going to be trolling. We're in good water right now. It's about 84 degrees and real clean. So we're looking for basically what we're looking for is a blue marlin. That would be our ultimate catch. Um, there's some sailfish and striped marlin out here, scattered dorado. And if we get on a school of porpoise, we might get some tuna out of that too. But what I do know is that it didn't take long to hook up. It seems as though we were to cut our teeth on Dorado. Dorado go berserk when they hit the deck. More than one angler has wound up with a hook driven into a leg. The secret is to subdue them quickly, hence the pocket on the stern. As soon as they are gaffed, into the pocket they go and out of harm's way. Finally, the Dorado returned en masse, and a double hookup turned into a treble. For first time game fishermen, the Dorado or dolphin fish was a great way to break the duck. It is important not to be too tentative, to make sure you keep pressure on the fish and a bend in the rod. Angling, as the name suggests, depends a lot on angles, and in this case, you want to keep the line angle well below the rod tip. A bent rod acts like a big shock absorber. That's the way. That hit with a bit of pizzazz brownie. A bit of zip. To retrieve line, lift the rod. That is when the fish has stopped heading for the horizon and wind by lowering the rod tip towards the water. Stop winding, then lift again and so on. Any time the line feels a little slack and the bend disappears from the rod, wind as though your life depends on it. Only relax when the pressure is back on. The best way to learn is to attach yourself to a fish. Well done. 
fun experience, great learning experience, and it's absolutely awesome. Well, next time round, you see you want a big marlin. Thank you. Sorry about that. Often you hear the local boys talking about a fish called a dolphin, and they don't mean uh, the mammal. This is what they mean. So if uh, you hear a game fisherman talking about dolphin, caught a couple of dolphin, it doesn't mean those nice big things that we all love. It's uh, these guys. We joined the hundreds of boats that are headed for shore and found the pelicans particularly friendly. They weren't the only friendly spectators we attracted.